Good morning. Good morning. And uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Welcome to those who get some joining us online as well. And good to have everyone here. Love the sound of uh, conversation and fellowship. But let's, uh, let's start together, shall we? In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, Scorned by the ones he came. <clears throat> Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Ready. Then bursting forth in glorious day, 
Up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands Sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till I returns to calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I stand. This morning, if you notice on the front of the bulletin, we've got an outline, and it is following Jesus. So in Christ alone, in Christ I stand, following Jesus till the very end, until the end. So that when we come back in time for our, uh, our lesson time, that'll be the focus of that. We have announcements. Welcome. Special welcome to those who are helping out to camp this weekend, uh, Nebraska Youth Camp, and we thank them for their efforts. If you'd like to go watch the softball games, uh, their schedule's in the foyer, and I'm sure they would appreciate you coming out and cheering them on. Tom Haig and his family, uh, we will remember them in our prayers and thoughts. His brother Mark passed away this week. Sonny Sidlow is taking radiation treatments every weekday and tolerating it as well as possible. Chris Carmen's sister, uh, she's feeling much better now. And Bill Walker, he's hoping to return in June, so that would be great if he can. He's been away for a long time. At this time, uh, we'll have first prayer by Pete. Let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious and uh, holy Father, uh, we come before you at this time. Uh, Father, thanking you for just giving us a beautiful day to be able to come together and uh, worship you. Uh, Father, we are so thankful for uh, the, hot, or the Kearney Church uh, here. And uh, Father, for everyone that has uh, come out. And uh, Father, we pray that uh, you will be with us as we uh, worship, uh, as Drew has said this morning, Father, uh, we want to pray for uh, all the people on our prayer list, especially uh, Tom. Uh, Father, be with his family, comfort him through this time of loss. And Father, we know how hard that is, and Father, help us uh, to wrap our arms around the family right now and uh, through this time. And Father, we pray that uh, they can uh, be encouraged, uh, Father, by uh, all that we can do uh, for the family. Father, be with uh, Greg this morning as he uh, brings forth uh, the message that you put us on his heart. And Father, we pray that, uh, Father, we can take it and uh, apply it to our lives and, uh, Father, share it with the people around us uh, as we go throughout this week. Father, thank you for the opportunity to uh, be here and, uh, Father, uh, for the church and uh, be with us in our fellowship always. Help us to encourage each other and uplift each other. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Morning, church. Morning. We're going to start with the chorus. <laughs> here we are, but straying pilgrims here. Our path is often dim, 
But to cheer us on our journey still, we sing this wayside hymn. Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions rise, soon will be our home forever. And the smile of the blessed giver gladdens all our longing eyes. Here our feet are often weary on the hills that throng our way. Here the tempest darkly gathers, but our hearts within us say, Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions rise, soon will be our home forever and the smile of the blessed giver gladdens all our longing eyes. Here our souls are often fearful of the pilgrim's lurking foe, but the Lord is our defender and he tells us we may know yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions rise soon will be our home forever and the smile of the blessed giver gladdens all our longing eyes. Uh, after this song, we'll have Kenneth lead us in a prayer. Tempted and tried, we're off May to wonder why it should be thus all the day long while there are others living about us never molested though in the wrong father Jesus. 
Jesus coming in glory when he comes from his home in the sky then we shall meet him in that bright mansion we'll understand it all by and by father alone will know all about it father alone will understand why my brother live in the sunshine will understand it all by and by let us pray our Father in heaven, we thank Thee for this time you've given us to come and worship Thee in spirit and in truth. We ask, Father, that You be with those on our prayer list. We continually think about them every day. We pray blessings on Tom's family and also on Sonny. And, and be with our uh, campers this year. and. Help them to remain strong in your truth. Go with us now throughout this service. In Jesus' name, amen. In heavenly armor we'll enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. When the power of darkness comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. He's raised up a standard, the power of his blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. When your enemy presses and hard, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. Uh, after this next song, we'll have our communion. If you forgot to pick up your communion packets when you walked in, just raise your hand during this song and we'll have someone bring them to you. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died my riches gain I can't but 
saying things that charm me most. I sacrifice them to His blood. See from His head His hand His feet Sorrow and love flow me go down Did e'er such love and sorrow Dying crimson like a rose spreads o'er his body on the tree. Then am I dead to Demands my soul, my life, my all. I'm sure everybody knows this is Memorial Day weekend. It's a day designated to honor those who've given their lives for freedom. We have a couple other days, Veterans Day and Armed Services Day for military people, but this is for those that have died and given their life for freedom. Right now in this country, the First, Second, Third, and Fourth Amendments are under attack. I think we, um, we need to stand up for freedom. The sign out front this week says, with freedom comes responsibility. Eleanor Roosevelt said that. We've been called the silent majority. We as Christians, I think we need to be called the silent majority. Or we've been called the silent minority, majority. Anyway, we need to be the vocal majority. Because things are not going real good right now. If you'd like to follow along, I'm going to be reading uh, the song, Were You There? It's page number 734 in our songbooks. I'd like to sing this a little more often. I love this song. You know, last week we were complaining because it was too cold. This week it's hot, maybe too hot. I love Nebraska. Verse 1, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Verse 2, were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when he rose up from the dead, from the grave? We all were there. 
We weren't alive 2,000 years ago, but we were there. And I think about when Jesus came into Jerusalem, people lined the streets, were throwing down their coats, cutting off the tree branches, putting them down for him to walk on. They thought he was going to come and overthrow the Roman government. That's what they thought. But that's not what he came for. And I, I think, you know, if, if we were there, were we, gonna, were we there lining the streets and cheering him on? And then a few days later, were we the ones out there, like we've seen in this country the last couple of years, the mob mentality. They went from praising this man to wanting to crucify him, calling for his death. When he, when he carried his own cross to Calvary, they were jeering him, spitting on him, you know, probably throwing rocks at him. It was horrible. It was us. When he died, the scriptures, I think all four of them, the gospels, maybe not, maybe not John, but they talk about who was there. Of course, his mother was there. But it, it mentions the fact that the women were there. And all of us men know that a good woman's uh, the biggest asset we can have in this life. But um, just think about where we were. You know, were we like Peter? He, he was ready to fight in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus. Not too many hours later, he was standing out there denying Christ. He still loved him, but he was scared. We get scared sometimes, but we need to be strong. The last verse, which isn't in our songbooks, says, I'll be there when the Savior calls my name. We are all going to be there. We talked about that in class this morning. We're all going to kneel before God. We're all going to praise his name at one time or another. But that doesn't mean we're all going to be welcomed into heaven. We can't do enough good to buy our way into heaven. It's only from the grace and mercy that Jesus did when he died on this cross. So as we think about these things, let's say a prayer for the, the loaf that represents Jesus' body. Dear God, we come to you in prayer today and we, we thank you for all the many blessings that we have, but most of all, we thank you for Jesus. We just hope that we can examine ourselves and know that what you did for us is something that we can never repay. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Likewise, the fruit of the vine represents Jesus' blood that he spilled to cover our way too many sins. Dear God, we come to you again in prayer. Again, we can't thank you enough. We thank you for this representation of Jesus' blood, the fact that he is willing to die for our sins and to talk to you on our behalf. We pray these things in his holy name. Amen. This is also a convenient time to think about how blessed we are monetarily and, and just to live in this great country. There's a box in the back if you'd like to contribute or you can contribute online. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, we, we thank you once again for all the blessings that we enjoy in this life and in this great country. We just pray that we can give back to you some of what you've loaned us to help with the work of, of this church and of, uh, to spread your word around the world. Dear God, we pray for our elders that they can guide this congregation properly and, and do it in a way that is in accordance with your will. Dear God, thank you once again for everything you've given us. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.
After this song, we'll have our scripture reading and our lesson. I'm satisfied with just the cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Though often tempted, tormented and tested, and like the prophet, my pillow was stone. And though I find here no permanent dwelling, I know he'll give me a mansion my own. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Don't think me poor, or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged. I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a robe and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets that are pure as gold. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we'll never more wander but I walk the streets that are pure as gold. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 26. Now it happened that as he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But others say, Elijah, and others, that one of the prophets of old has risen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, The Christ of God. And he strictly charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or for forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory the glory of the Father and of the holy angels.
Thank you, Andrew. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good. That sounds good. Good to see you. We're, okay. Really packed in over here. Wonderful. Good to see you. If you get a little overheated or uh, need elbow room, there's, you just slide over. That, that'd be okay. You're invited. Anyway, that's fun. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Um, Welcome. I want to mention one thing, because we've got a lot of uh, Nebraska Youth, Co Youth Camp family and friends uh, here today, and uh, it's mentioned on the prayer list that uh, our friends from the Hastings Church, some kids that have been waiting to have a baby for a long time, one, two, had some uh, difficulty during the process of the pregnancy, uh, have, have delivered their baby. So it's in the prayer list. Andy and <clears throat> Erica Adams, uh, they've served out at junior camp for many years. The beautiful little baby girl, I saw, well, pictures, you know, on the internet uh, yesterday. And uh, that was uh, just good to see. Uh, I think the number was 32 weeks she made it uh, after having difficulty um, holding on. And, uh, and she, that, anyway, that's just good news. Great news to see, uh, to see that. So if you know uh, Andy and Erica and, and uh, uh, from camp or from any other reason, uh, reach out to them. And you can, I just want to invite you to say congratulations to that, to them. Let's see, what else? Um, make sure I got all my uh, notes ready to go here. Uh, I just wanted to uh, <clears throat> mention one thing. Uh, uh, that our, our theme, our title this morning is Following Jesus to the End. I, I had an opportunity this week to serve a, a family during a time of a funeral. And uh, I've said this before, and uh, this phrase means something to me, a full-throated Christian funeral is just a wonderful thing. It's wonderful to be a part of and to be able to celebrate that life. And anyway, that was great. The other reason I'm mentioning it is that uh, afterwards at the reception, the family said, well, when mom can't get out, uh, mom and dad, but dad's gone now. When mom can't get out, she watches your services online. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. And uh, I don't know if they'll see this live or recorded or whatever, but uh, um, it's neat to be a part of and neat to be able to uh, uh, to touch lives in that way. Uh, let's see. From our reading, we got that. Okay, ready? Let's go to work, shall we? Following Jesus to the end. Jesus is attractive in many ways. Um, he was attractive uh, during his ministry. People followed him but for various reasons. As we read about Jesus' story and the, and the life that he lived, we see how people followed him for many different reasons. We're going to look at a couple of scriptures here in just a moment. As we walk through this this morning, we're going to see uh, how we choose Jesus, how important that is, important to our life today as well as the eternal uh, life. Last week, I, I ended with a, a passage from Luke and said we're going to get to that today. We're going to fill that in here uh, where we say structure. We're, we're going to see... <clears throat> What the, what the world we live in builds as a structure for life and growth and development and, and, and flourishing. And, and, and I hope we can challenge that. I hope we can see that and put Jesus right on top of that. What I really want to encourage us to do is to build on Jesus. Whatever we do, wherever we go, we build on Jesus. We live our life with him and then of course we live our life with him to the very end i guess that's the connection to um, sharing a time of a funeral you know the person living for jesus to the very end i hope that we can um, get there i hope that we can all uh, consider that as uh, our priority as we consider this idea of living for jesus and going to the very end. The phrase that we want to use and want to hang on to is, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. 
This life that we live is, is not just a, a quick dash to get across the finish line as quickly as we can, but it's a marathon. It takes uh, effort. It takes time to be a part of that. And as we get into our lesson this morning, I want to reiterate something that I've said over time that I don't want you to ever forget. You're loved more than you know. Ready? Following Jesus. Choose Jesus. This is a, a, this is perhaps, well, I think all of us in here might agree. This is the most important choice that we make in a lifetime. Uh, you know, when you're sitting at the car dealership, who cares if it's red, white, black, blue, right? Really, in the end. Well, you might have your preferences. When the family gets together and, and uh, stumbles and bumbles, you know, uh, where do you want to go eat tonight? Oh, I don't know. Or, uh, or after church on Sunday morning, oh, do, what, do you, what do you feel like? We're gonna, did we have anything in the fridge? No, no. Where are, you gonna, where are we going to go eat? Your choices really may be not all that consequential in the end. But choosing Jesus is important. Choosing Jesus is critical to not just our eternal life, but I maintain to our day-to-day -day life as well. I want to encourage you, of course, to choose Jesus. Many did. As he was teaching and ministering, many people chose Jesus. Large crowds followed him. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. You'll, you'll see, you, you, this is familiar to you, which is the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd was following him. I'm just going to stop there. I just wanted to insert that. A large crowd was following Jesus. And they were following for his teaching, Yes, but they saw his healing ministry as well, and they wanted to be a part of that. But of course, you know, that large crowd immediately after this, Jesus has them sit down and he feeds this large crowd. And we find out in John chapter six, later on, they come back to Jesus and they say, show us a sign, show us another sign. In fact, maybe you could feed us again. Jesus said, you're just following because I was feeding you. In fact, it was easy to follow Jesus when we could listen to his good words, when we could watch him heal the sick, when we could take part in the loaves and fishes. But after that, Jesus looked him straight in the eye. He says, I am the bread of life. This isn't what matters. That bread that we eat, food, whatever that food is, that's not important. Jesus says, I am. I am the bread of life. We studied through John a while back, and as we went through, we saw repeatedly where Jesus took traditions, teachings of their faith, key items that the Jewish people understood. And he turned, he said, this is not bread. I am the bread of life. Martha says, well, uh, my Lazarus, I'll see him again after the resurrection. Jesus says, no, that's not. The, I am the resurrection again and again. He said those things. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, but whoever believes in me shall not thirst. He challenged the people that were following him to recognize that it's not just religion that they were to be about. It was to be about connecting with the Son of God. And then he said to them, but... but after this, he's talking to his disciples here in Luke chapter 9. We're switching gears where Jesus is with his disciples. And he's asking them, what do the crowds think of this? All these crowds that have been following, these crowds that have been with me, what do they think about this teaching? What do they think about me and my ministry? Oh, some think that you're John the Baptist uh, reborn. Some think you might be Elijah or one of the other prophets of old. And here then he, he says to the disciples, but who do you say that I am? Class, believers, followers of Jesus. Who do we say that he is? Is he a good teacher? Yes, but he's not just that. We know Jesus to be our savior our anchor, our connection to the Heavenly Father, our King. 
King Jesus, the one that we follow. And Peter said, you are the Christ of God, the Christ, the anointed one, the chosen one, the one who would come. And the, Jesus said, I, strictly charged, John's narrat- or Luke's narrating here, and he strictly charged and commanded them to, to tell no one, saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed on the third day and then be raised. See, there was a plan. There was a bigger plan than just coming to, to teach and to feed in a large audience, there was a plan for this chosen one of, G, of, of God, the anointed one, the Christ. But the people didn't always want to be a part of that. In fact, back to that passage in John, at the end of that, when Jesus says, you're coming for more food, he said, that's not what this is about. I'm not going to feed you anymore. Instead, you need to take on this bread of life. They said, oh, that's too difficult. Too difficult to take your words, Jesus. They they sound great, but to actually put them into our life, to actually implement Jesus' teachings in our life, that's tough. Jesus, I don't know if we can do that. Wait a minute. Serve, give, live, invest yourself in others. Oh, Jesus, that's, that's, that's too tough. I can't, I I don't know if I can do that, Jesus. And so when they found out they weren't getting any more of that kind of bread, John tells us that many left. Many left him at that time. Many choose to leave Jesus, maybe because his teachings are just too hard. Maybe it's not just exactly what they thought it was when they started. Well, I mentioned many people started with Jesus, but at times, a couple of times through his ministry, the gospel writers tell us that people left. But I think about this uh, feeding the five thousand. I think I want to. Have you, any of you heard of the new vegetarians? Have you heard of that? The, the new vegetarians. It's a whole new way of, of thinking about veganism or vegetarianism. And they, they call themselves the n- new vegetarians. Well, their definition of the new is that uh, actually occasionally bacon's okay. Well, I get that. You're snickering. You're with me, right? I get that. Okay, occasionally bacon's for me more than just occasionally. But the new, right, they, they call themselves the new. The new vegetarians say, you know, bacon's okay. In fact, fish and chicken is okay, you know, occasionally. Well, you know, sometimes you just want some variety. Wait a minute. Oh, I want to be this vegan. Oh, but, but, but you know, sometimes I, I you know, I need in fact, the true, uh, true vegans uh, of the world have, have risen up and they've said, you can't call yourselves vegetarian. That's just not, you're just, you're just cheating. Well, but when somebody serves us something, we don't want to appear to be rude. So we want to, it's okay. So we're, we're just going to be a little bit flexible. Okay, well, that's fine. Call yourselves flexitarians then. Okay, you can find this. You can read about this. So, so this whole thing, so they call themselves flexitarians. Okay, I'm not vegetarian because occasionally, you know, you want something a little different. It takes commitment to choose Jesus and to follow all the way, to go all in. Are you with me on that illustration? It takes commitment not a sprint, it's a marathon. It takes effort and commitment. The th- situation is in the Christian world right now is that uh, actually we've got a lot of f- right? flexitarian Christians. People, well, you know, I like Jesus when he's teaching about love, but you know, when he teaches about judgment, I'm not too sure I like that part. When Jesus teaches about hope and heaven, ah, that's, he's our guy. When he warns about hell and turning away, oh, Jesus, you sound a little bit difficult. You sound a little bit harsh. Maybe I can be a little flexible and I'll, I'll choose what I want when I want it. 
Yeah. There's a plan that Jesus had. He came. He came to die for our eternal salvation to cover our sins. We want to choose Jesus, but not just for the eternal, which is so important. First John uh, chapter five, John writes this. I, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This promise that we would have eternal life in Jesus. But also in Jesus' words, in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, he says the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. And he's illustrating that, the thief, as, as the Satan who wants to come and disrupt our life and take away and draw us away. But instead, he says, I, Jesus, the good shepherd, he says, I, I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. We want to be with Jesus so that we can be with Jesus for eternity. But we want to be with Jesus so that we can have that abundant life that he offers now. Abundant life that is free from some of the self-inflicted, self-inflicted injuries that people encounter over the course of a lifetime. Stay connected to Jesus People from uh, groups such as AA repeat, even though they may use a term such as higher power, some generic term, they mean God. They say it is necessary. It's absolutely critical that somebody has a connection to that higher power in order to get away from things such as addiction. We need that. We need Jesus. It's real easy to point to those extreme examples and say, look, the world needs Jesus. It's easy to point to prisons that have adopted a full on uh, ministry program inside their jails that they bring in people and they teach the gospel and they develop relationships among the inmates with Jesus. It's easy to point to those ex extreme examples, but what about your da our daily life? Your day to day life, you stay connected to, plugged into Jesus. Last week I mentioned uh, a, a section of Luke chapter 6. We read it at the end, and I said, we're going to get back to that. And I want to look at this as the structure that the world gives for life and for oh success is etc what the value of this what this world values is illustrated in Jesus's teaching Matthew uh, chapters 5 through 7 we refer to as the sermon on the mount Luke in this section repeats much of that teaching but he says Jesus stepped down off the mountain onto the plain so if you looked on uh, on your, uh, in your Bible, you might see a heading that it would say Jesus is teaching on the plain. But this is where Jesus repeats some from that Sermon on the Mount, the blessed passages, blessed are these and those. So let's, let's read. From Luke chapter six, Jesus lifted up his eyes on his disciples and he said, <clears throat> blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be, shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. There's no promise of an easy go for followers of Jesus. He never made that. But Luke includes something following this. This passage teachers will refer to as the blessing, the blesseds and the woes, the blessings and the woes. And it's interesting how Jesus pairs this. But I want, we're going to look a little bit, maybe a little bit deeper than, than normal. 
most of the time we see, uh, bless are you the poor. And then he begins with, uh, uh, after verse 23 goes on, rejoice in that day, leap for joy. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. So he puts that out there into the future. But then he says, but woe to you, verse 24, who are rich for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you for so their fathers did to the false prophets. It's easy to get into this passage and see, oh, Jesus started with the poor and went on to the rich. It's easy for us to dig into that. Many times we teach that and we say, well, look at the, the details here. Boy, there's a caution. There's a warning. Well, it's also equal, equally important to say, hey, you know what? Look around. Guess what? And the scale of this world that we live in, we're all rich in this world. Hungry and full. Oh, come on, let's just look at each other. We're not hungry, right? I, you will have, how's your relationship with that bathroom scale? Come on, right? In fact, you, all right, I got a thumbs up. You ignore that bathroom scale quite intentionally, don't you? Right? Okay, I, I'm, I'm digging on that a little bit. We're not hungry. We're full. By the world's standards, we're rich. We, we live a mostly peaceful and happy life. Okay, so set, those, uh, set that aside and look at the four pairings that Jesus presents in this teaching. And in fact, as Jesus presents this, Jesus is teaching about power and comfort and success and recognition. You see that in there? He goes, the, the blesseds and the woes. And, he, and he's really focusing on this structure, and that's the word I'm using today. He really illustrates a structure of how the world is built and how the world counts people who are of value and how the world gives value. Let's look inside at this notion of power and comfort and success. The world would have us to strive for these things, power, would strive for comfort, strive for success. Strive to be valued in this world through recognition. Well, just look around. The people that make the news, that make the rules, that make the famous lists, right? And it's not just a matter of changing the world's perspective, your team or my team. The whole structure is opposite of what Jesus would have us to live. In fact, we've used the term many times over the years, the upside down kingdom. As we read Luke's account, we read really this description of the upside down kingdom. It's Jesus's kingdom that's upside down to this world. It's not just a matter of resting in power and success, but to strive for something different. We live in a time when that recognition is so important. I know many of you may have grown up hearing the term the me generation. Let me tell you, the me generation of some two or three decades ago is nothing compared to what's available today. Instant fame, instant access. Uh, being mentioned, being uh, counted as famous is so important to folks. In fact, we were singing that um, we've got a mansion just over the hilltop. I had our, uh, I had our uh, Skippy, I had the, uh, the streaming uh, on my phone I was watching, and it auto-generates the captions if you turn the uh, thing there. And it says, I've got a mention, M-E-N-T-I-O-N, because, hey, that word is much more familiar to the world that we live in than a mansion, right? I don't know how to mention. We want to be mentioned, but not in Jesus' world. I'm going to try to give an illustration and say, well, what, how do we... How do we build our life? This, how do we build on this? I want to say Jesus is the answer. Here, here's a, a few illustrations as we choose Jesus. As we choose not the world's structure, considering power, comfort, success, and recognition, but Jesus' plan. Uh, so I, I actually have a, 
a couple of uh, physical illustrations here I'm going to use, but I'm also going to put some slides up so that everybody can see whether they're uh, joining us online or not. What, what will we build on as we build this life, as we live for Jesus? Okay, uh, yeah, here's the hint. I've got, got a ladder laying over here. I'll pull it up here in just a moment and we'll, we'll share a physical illustration. But, you know, when you think about ladders, uh, it, you got to be really careful how you use these things. Uh, but it is possible to reach higher than, you know, you think at first. You can stack them and work on. And, and the, some of the best illustrations are reaching over the staircase. Uh, this guy, at least he's got somebody helping to hold him up there. Just real quick. That guy doesn't. He's on his own. <coughs> I, I don't know, brave or what, but I don't know. That's, uh, that's, that's some effort right there. And then truth is, you can stack a ladder on almost anything. That's a shopping cart. And by the way, that's one, two, three tables, right? I, I saw pictures of a, a ladder on a forklift. I've done that in the back of a pickup. I've never done that on a forklift, but pretty solid pickup. But three stacks of tables and then the ladder. The question is, what are we going to build our life on? What will we build on? The world's version of power and success and recognition and comfort as being the measure of life. Folks, we can spend our entire life chasing that and not get where we want to be. We spend our entire life chasing that. So here's the illustration. Now, I've had this for a while. And I just wanted to uh, make sure that we had a chance to, uh, to use this. So, let's see if I can come into the... Uh, so, I, I guess I'm going to maintain that... Uh, well, I'll show you. This is what happened when an aluminum uh, ladder goes through a, uh, a garage fire. The aluminum doesn't do so, so well. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, hold up so well. That's where this comes from. But I want to suggest for just a moment that the world's version of building our life on what the world values is a lot like trying to work and use a ladder that's got pieces missing, that's bent, twisted, melted, and failed. Oh, you could give everything you have to build a life of power. That's not it. You can give every minute you have to build a, a life of success and fame. In this world, it may not take even very much to get yourself uh, famous for a few minutes. But it's just like building your life on a failed, melted, broken ladder. It's not there. Instead, Jesus has a plan for us. And we call it the upside down kingdom. But my illustration is, that it's more of an intact, it's more intact ladder than anything else that the world could ever build. Jesus, on that structure of power and comfort and success and fame or recognition, Jesus had all the power in the universe and he gave it up to live and serve you and me. Jesus had, by all means, by all measurements, comfort, but not in this world. He gave that up, living as one of us. His life was not one of comfort. His plan was, in fact, one of being crucified and coming back after three days. The life that Jesus lived was one of giving himself completely as his followers, as his students, can we build our life on the same measure? To give our life completely to him and to others around. That's the upside down kingdom. Not to build the power and comfort and success and recognition. In fact, on that last point, 
What was one of the last things that Jesus said? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In that moment of his death, he did not have the worldly recognition that people strive for. In fact, he was left alone at that moment. What are we going to build on? What path do you choose? To choose to follow the upside down kingdom or to choose to follow the world? What structure do you trust? You trust the intact ladder that's built by trusting Jesus. This upside down kingdom looks strange to the world, but it's a way of giving of yourself, spending yourself, wringing yourself out for others, following the truths of God's word, following the teaching of Jesus. Truth. Remember when Jesus stood before Pilate and he said truth. Pilate said, what is truth? That's a question the world asks today. But just listen to the message that the media sends back to us. Truth sounds like hate to those who hate truth. No, it's just something. Truth might sound like hate in this world to those who hate truth, who don't want to live by that standard. Power. Jesus gave up his power. Comfort, Jesus lived without comfort. Success, by any measure, this world would say, this teacher was killed by the government. How could you count that a success? But we know over time, God's plan followed through. Mm. What structure do you trust? What plan will you follow? We want to choose Jesus for eternal life and for now. We want to build our life. I want, you to, I want you to build your life on Jesus. That's really the message. I want you to build your life on Jesus. I don't want you to leave him. I want you to stick with him for a lifetime. I want you to be a follower of Jesus all the days of your life. We want to build our life with Jesus, to be with him through the end, to the end. We want to follow King Jesus, to be a part of his upside down kingdom. Everything that Jesus teaches goes contrary to this world that we live in and the things that are valued here creates a challenge for us. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. It's not a promise of an easy route. For whoever does, would save his life will lose it. For whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. It's an upside down way of thinking. It doesn't fit the world that we live in. But I want you to be on Jesus's side with Jesus to the end. That means not giving up. It means not giving in. I want you to follow him all the days of your life. Uh, Today, hey, at lunch, if you have a a quiet moment in your conversation, uh, I don't know, maybe one of these will come to mind. You can think of a discussion topic while you're uh, you're, uh, sharing together. I choose Jesus every, I don't know, fill in the blank. When do you choose Jesus? It's not just once. It's not just a sprint. It's a marathon. We've got to continue to choose him. This world structure versus the upside down kingdom structure, the kingdom of Jesus is important to our life. Just a discussion point. And I don't know, if it comes up, maybe you'd say, By the way, what do you think he really means when he says, you are loved more than you know? You are loved more than you know. For nine years and more, you've been loved more than you know. Some families I've known here, I can say I've known some of these families for 40 years. You're loved more than you know. I know some can't even fathom 40 years yet, but, uh, but there it is. 
You're loved more than you know. I want you to follow Jesus to the very end. Sprint. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Paul writes, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another and in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in harmony, in Christ. You are loved more than you know. Let's stand together and sing the song. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have a little my side I will hasten to him hasten so glad and free Jesus greatest highest I will come to thee I am resolved to Leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. closing prayer. I have a brief announcement. Um, June next week we'll start a new chapter in the church here and of course we want everyone to uh, be involved with our church where we go in the future. Um, we have not intentionally kept you in the dark about what's going on because there's not much going on. We contracted with an employment company four months ago and they yet have to find us a viable candidate. So uh, next week, uh, we will have speaking for us uh, Garrett Schwarz from York. He's the athletic director, and Greg said he's a good youth minister also. Is that correct? So we look forward to hearing him speak. Uh, the week after, uh, Titus Robison will be speaking, and that's Sarah Beth's brother. So we will have some speakers coming. So we ask this time that you pray for us and pray for the church here, that we will find the right family to, to serve us in the future. you pray with me, please? Father in heaven, as we come in prayer, we give you all honor and glory. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for each and every soul that has taken time this morning here and around the world to focus on you and to worship you. Uh, again, I ask that you bless the souls that have done so. Again, Father, we, uh, we ask for the help and strength to build our life on Christ to continue each and every day to do your will and to do what he's taught us. Uh, we, we again thank you for the way, the truth, and our life through our Savior. Good Father, we ask that you be with this congregation, be with the elders that uh, have to make <clears throat> decisions to continue the work here in Kearney. We ask that uh, you help them and, and look to you for the, the guidance. Uh, we again thank you for Greg and thank you for all the work uh, he's done, and we just appreciate uh, the love of this family. Um, it's your family, Father. Again, Father, we uh, want to go into this new week 
to be a shining light for you and to do your will to show the love that you've shown to us. We thank you so much. We love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.